And first up, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Brother Tong Kong uh, from Cambodia, who will be sharing with us about um, the mission work in Cambodia. Okay, so can we give him a round of applause, please? Welcome him. Good morning, brother and sisters. Good morning. Yeah. Thank you so much for welcoming us to Singapore as uh, our first time in Singapore. Today, me and my wife and our brother-in-law, uh, uh, brother Lun Lai, we uh, have a joy time here in Singapore and uh, wonderful to see your country and also the congregation here. So thank you so much for your love for Cambodia. And it has been uh, 15 years since we started Church of Sim Reap and Church of Kompong Thom and Church of Kandal. Uh, we thank God for your faithfulness, prayers, and supporting the work in Cambodia. Today, I would like to share our ministry here so that you may know us and pray uh, for us. Yeah. Yeah. It's my name, uh, Thon Kong. Yeah. Yeah. So here's uh, Cambodia, and you see Angkor Wat. Uh, temple that's uh, uh, the, the biggest temple in Cambodia and the waterfall where I live in uh, Siem Reap. Yeah. This is my family, uh, my wife, Sinat, here, and my daughter, Rachel, 14 years old, and my two twin boys, Joel and Jonah, uh, they are 11 years old. Yeah. I would like to share uh, our uh, place where we uh, live. Uh, you will see the first uh, yellow one, uh, Church of Siem Reap. Yeah. Uh, here's a Phnom Penh, and that is our place, uh, yellow one, uh, Siem Reap, close to the big lake, and then the green one, Kompong Thom Church, and the last one, Church of uh, Kandal. But we are very far from each uh, places. Yeah. So I would like to share with you a bit here that in 2008, we started Church of Siem Reap. I thank God for the, uh, His calling for me and my family to start this church. Let me briefly uh, share how we met uh, and start this church together with uh, Church of Singapore. In 2008, July, me and my wife, uh, we met Elder John Koo, but he was somewhere in Kampong Cham province, another part. Uh, so from my place to Kampong Cham province, it takes the bus uh, six hours. So because of the place too far, we decided to meet uh, halfway. Uh, and then I and my wife, we met uh, Elder John Koo over there. And then we talk uh, a little bit, and he pray for me. And then in August, in August uh, 2008, he texts me a message, just say, uh, "Brother Ton Kong, God bless you and family." And that's all. And then he continued to send me a message that, "Oh, I will come down to Siem Reap," and I'm very excited. And then he came to Siem Reap in uh, August. Uh, 2008, 18, uh, 2008, and then we started to talk and pray, and he prayed for me, and that is the time that God moving forward for me and my family to uh, start the, the church, and then uh, on that day, I went to my senior pastor uh, to pray, uh, ask him to pray a blessing for me, and so we can start Church of Siem Reap. And we thank God in 1st September 2008, uh, that's our first time we start Church of Siem Reap. So almost two more months, this church will be uh, 15 years. Yeah, we thank God for this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, as we started the church following years, I really... Uh, appreciate the uh, COS team that uh, led by uh, Sister Cindy and the Children Ministry 
but I can recognize that some of your children's uh, ministry team married and have children over the years. And I thank God for, for them faithfully go to Cambodia and touch many children and life. And I would like to say that many children uh, during the trip for many years back, now they have become adult family and some of them have uh, children. So I thank God for this uh, blessing for the trip that uh, being led by uh, CUS, CUS team. And also that uh, uh, in June, we have team that come from here led by brother Justin to uh, Cambodia. This is our service. Uh, we just one hour behind Singapore. Uh, so while we are worship here and they are worship in, in Siem Reap. Yeah. And we also had a lockdown for two, more than two years in, in Siem Reap. And I would like to say that in Cambodia, Siem Reap is the worst place that affected by COVID and we are the last uh, red zone. Yeah. We have our weekly cell group Bible study yeah, from uh, Tuesday to uh, Friday. And we have other activity also during the week. And this is a men fellowship. Yeah, we have uh, once a month a fellowship, and also sometimes uh, we go out for camping. Uh, we do uh, Bible study, prayer, and also encourage one another how to be a good husband, good uh, father, and also a good uh, leader of the church. Yeah. And this is a women fellowship that mostly my wife take over this one. And uh, we have also monthly fellowship. And especially the big day is uh, uh, in, uh, we have Women's Day. So we invite uh, all women and also among of them uh, non-believers to join, to encourage them. Because back in Cambodia, uh, I just would like to say that uh, women are working more and more responsibility even though in the family and even though outside the family working. So they need more uh, encouragement, uh, they need more prayer. So church is very important to uh, encourage them and also help them to continue and step up and uh, beg for what they have, for what they don't have. Yeah, we have the uh, very important right now uh, youth uh, fellowship. And I just would like to say that uh, since we started the church, we had only children ministry. But over the year, uh, the children grow up. And a few years ago, my daughter said that we, she doesn't want to go to Sunday school anymore <laughs> because they grow bigger. So we think and we pray how we are going to lead them uh, in their life uh, from stage to another stage of their, of their age. So God gave us a, a vision that we put up in the church, uh, church of Siemria. We see that we, we need to have all training, all equipment of teaching the word of God in every stage of a life, of a church member life, a uh, little boy, uh, little children, little uh, uh, youth and adults and young adults and old. So from this time on, Church of Siem Reap, uh, we have a big vision that we need to have all people, all stage of life, uh, of age, uh, involved in the ministry outreach. So we thank God that almost two years now, we have this uh, Youth Fellowship, every afternoon we conduct Bible study for them and other activity. So we thank God that uh, uh, we also reach out to more youth outside also. Yeah, we have uh, also teaching uh, Sunday school and also the English service. Yeah, we have three places in, in the area that we teach every, uh, every day. 
and we have our volunteer from the church, the youth that go out and teach. And you can see the children, uh, this is uh, uh, soon they will grow up and we send them to a youth uh, ministry. Yeah. We thank God for a great blessing and uh, extended support to the people during the COVID-19 in Cambodia. So in Simriap, I would like to say that we are the most place that affected uh, because it's a tourism area and more than two years, uh, no tourists are walking. Every place is closed and uh, people are locked down. So very uh, grateful to God for the Church of Singapore that you extend your great support to uh, help them uh, in the time they are in the need. So we are very grateful for this and uh, they are so happy and uh, because during these two years what people expect is that they live in healthy and they have something in their home uh, to eat. So church very uh, grateful that we are be a part of this uh, opportunity to support all of the families and not only the members in church of Simriap but we distribute to the neighbors uh, in, in their families also. Yeah, this is a visiting team from COS. Yeah, we are uh, many years and uh, thank you for visiting us and also that we can come here to visit uh, all of you too. Yeah, in Church of Simria, uh, evangelism, baptism is very uh, important ministry, the core values of our church that every uh, three or four months, uh, we try our best to baptize the new people. So we thank God that uh, uh, we do evangelism uh, through our ministry and our outreach through the church member. And uh, we thank God for more people uh, coming to know Jesus Christ back in Simria. So. I will go back and uh, in uh, two more months time, we will prepare a new baptism for them. We thank God for over the years, 15 years, that Church of Simria uh, do outreach to many places in the village, also in the city. And we thank God for this opportunity that Church of Simria has a vision to reach out to uh, another places. So I would like to introduce you here. Uh, we are planning to adopt a new mission outreach. Uh, here is a new place that about 40 kilometers from Siem Reap, in north of Siem Reap. And this is the isolated area. It was to be the, the forest. But the government has this a new plan right now because in Siem Reap, many, many temples that government not allow residents to live. But because of people don't have land, they are poor, they stay in the land under government protection for many years. But sadly that last year, government uh, do the checklist for all the families. And then last uh, January, they go back to do all the record counting the families, and then in February, they just suddenly evacuated people. So they, they moved the whole area in, in Angkor Wat area. The plan is uh, 10,000 families. So right now they move uh, almost uh, uh, 5,000 uh, families already. So they will move more. So the plan of government to move the families who live in the Angkor Wat area, that uh, protection area, uh, until 2030, so to the place. So the place is just like uh, nothing, and then they just put people in. So I would like to say that the people here are isolated, and uh, they are disconnected from the society because the government has no place to put them, just put immediately. So, 
and last time we uh, visit them and we pray for them and we give extra uh, help to them, rice and food for all of them. So uh, Church of Simri has a plan to uh, start the education for children over there because over there no school, no market, and uh, no job. And the old people, the parents need to traveling to Simri uh, 40 kilometers every day by motorbike. So they go back home very late. Their children stay back and without safe. Uh, and then the people over there are mixed because they are come from different area. So we plan to give them uh, English class over there and also Khmer study, mathematics and some other so they can read. And we plan to do the Bible training and teaching for all of them over there. And we also planning to do some uh, hygiene and help the health, especially primary care for children over there. And plan to give them the computer class and teaching and also some vocational training. We uh, want to help them so they can have a job over there in the future, like sewing class, like uh, uh, mechanic class. Thank you so much, and I would like to say the lastly that uh, around our area, government developed the place, but we are sadly that the road in front of our church uh, never take, never fix. Yeah, so uh, once in a while, government come and check, and then back for a long time. So we have these challenges every time uh, we have, we got rain and uh, we got flood. So I use three pumps <laughs> while raining. So uh, yeah, we when we look to the world flooding, so we are every day, <laughs> every time we have this one. So thank you so much for this uh, opportunity and listen to yes. us. Thank so you. I'll take the last maybe five ten minutes to just do a wrap out, and then the, what I'd like to do is uh, really to read through this. Two verses from Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 to 5. Paul says, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you. Always in every, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. You see, this letter was written... Ten years ago, after Paul's visit to Philippi and while he was in prison in Rome, and while he's in the prison cell, he was thinking and reminiscing about the past. And one of those recollections was about the church of Philippi and how it started and, how and where it is now. And you can see that uh, you know, Paul did not go to Philippi because... He was, he was reluctant to go, and, and he was traveling to various other places and lands up in uh, Troas. And then, in, as, as, we told, as we were told in Acts chapter 16, that Paul has a vision of the Macedonian man asking for help. Thus, he went to Macedonia, and then to Philippi being the major city. And uh, while he was in Philippi, probably he's looking for a man he saw in the vision, but no, he met a group of women at the riverside praying. And then Lydia, a seller of purple goods, came to know the Lord through his preaching and sharing. And, and Lydia is a wealthy woman, businesswoman, and he, she sold luxury textiles to the wealthy. And uh, she subsequently and her household came to the saving grace of God. And then later, Paul cast a demon out of a young slave girl. Uh, and because of this act, Silas, he and Silas was badly beaten and were locked up in prison. There, uh, while Paul and Silas were praying about midnight and then, you know, an earthquake disrupts and then uh, their singing stops and all the prison doors were opened and the chains were loose. And, that, and then Paul leads the frightened jailer to Christ and baptizes him 
and his family in the middle of the night. And then after that, shortly after this wrongly imprisonment, Paul left the city. But then think about it. He founded the church of, in Philippi with these few people who has received Christ and were baptized. And it's perhaps interesting to note that, uh, you know, they come from diverse backgrounds. One was a wealthy businesswoman. Another was a young slave girl, a jailer, and their household all coming together. How can it be? And yet, from this small gathering, the church in Philippi has grown and extended to the local community. So, remember that uh, Philippi was not Paul's priority until he saw the vision, and he was subjected to persecutions, and he was badly beaten, and was jailed by in Philippi. He could have turned away from Philippi, and yet he thanked God and prayed for them joyfully. Why? Because the lives of the Philippians were changed by the gospel. And they have grown in faith. His memory of Lydia's salvation brought him joy. His memory of the jailer and his family's conversion brought him joy. And then when he saw that this small group of people has grown and become a bigger church and the Brabant church, this all brought him joy. And Paul went on to say, My thankfulness to God and joyful prayers was because of the partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. You can see that, uh, you know, this is a bit uh, too crowded. First of all, Lydia graciously opened a home to Paul and his team. This is her hospitality. And then the Philippian church supported Paul and Silas financially when they departed to Thessalonica. And as such, this was the beginning of the gospel advancement into Thessalonica. And then in response to Paul's request for the struggling Jerusalem church, they give generously during the time when the Philippi church, they themselves, was under severe hardship. And then Paul thanked the Philippian church for their support delivered by Ephrodicus. He nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life, to bring the gift as a service to Paul. So thus, Paul became close partners with the Philippians, and that started in Philippi all the way to Rome. Now, when we think about it, we want to think about uh, how about COS partnership in the gospel with our mission points. And we thank God that COS is involved in missions since her induction, inception in 1963, and then for the last 60 years, COS has been in partnerships with many mission points across various countries. And COS has been supporting them regularly, not only in finance, but also in prayers, in different ministries, including participating in community outreaches to bring the gospel to the lost. And we thank God for your generosity in giving to missions. And we also thank God for you in fostering the relationship with our mission workers and members. And we also thank God for your hospi hospitality of many brothers and sisters who volunteered to host and take the missionaries out while they are here now. And through the mission trips which you have gone, you did not cease to bless and support them for the expansion of the gospel. Now, as Paul is remembering and reminiscing about the past, let us also remember our missionaries in prayers as well. Uh, we have three missionaries that are sharing with us now, and there are a total of 23 missionaries that would be coming or have already been in Singapore. So may I urge you to take your time to you know, mix with them, get to know them, and as well as pray for them. And, you know, the Philippians, they themselves really have an excellent partnership with Paul. They went all the way out to support Paul and his mission work. And may we also be like the Philippians to forge an excellent partnership in the gospel with our mission points. Let us do missions together. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, we are thankful for this morning, thankful that uh, you have, uh, you know, uh, 
allowed the three missionaries to come and share with us on their ministry and on their work. We pray that, Lord, may you also help us too, Lord, to remember them in our prayers, to be able to get to know them, to know their ministry as well as to involve in their ministries as well. And as, Lord, uh, more of the missionaries are here in Singapore too, as COS, Lord, may we also continue to extend our welcome and our hospitality to them. And even, Lord, as we uh, break forth for our fellowship, may we also be together, Lord, be able to get to know them too through the Coffee Fellowship. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So uh, the service is over. I'm rushing a little bit because of the, you know, the time. So be, if you like to, please come over to the Coffee Fellowship. Thanks.